Let's take a look at glaciers. What exactly are glaciers? Glaciers are simply bodies of ice that form from repeated periods of snowfall. Once they form, they are pulled very slowly downhill by gravity. There are generally two types of glaciers. First, we have alpine glaciers, which form high up in the mountains and travel downhill like rivers of ice. Then we have continental glaciers. These are massive glaciers that cover entire land masses, and they tend to move outwards from the center, often towards the coastline. Let's see what these look like. Here's an alpine glacier, and you can see it looks just like a river of ice. All of these flowing slowly downhill, carving out the rock as they go. A great example of a continental glacier would be Antarctica. It's this huge, thick sheet of ice that covers virtually the entire landmass. We see a similar thing in Greenland. Up close, you can see these huge sheets of ice ooze out from the center towards the coastline, slowly grinding away the rock beneath. When either type of glacier, whether it be alpine or continental, when they reach the ocean, large chunks of the ice tend to break off, and this is a process that's known as calving, and you can see it happening here. As climate change continues and the atmosphere and oceans are warmed, calving is happening at a faster rate. These big chunks that fall off of the glaciers then float out into the sea, becoming icebergs. The most important thing to look at with glaciers is how they impact the landscape. That is, how do they change the land as they grind over the surface over millions of years? First and foremost, we should know that glaciers grind down the rock that's on both sides and on the bottom of the area where they're moving, and the result is this large U-shaped valley, which you can see here in the diagram. Notice it's shaped like the letter U. Here's what it looks like in reality we can infer that this valley was formed by glaciation at some point in the past, and that inference is based on the general shape of the valley. Here's another U-shaped valley. As glaciers grind over the bedrock, they scratch it. They leave behind marks and grooves that are called striations. And these striations are important because they reveal the direction that the ice was moving before it melted. You can see them plucking and grinding away at the rock beneath, resulting in something like this. And by looking at those striations, we can draw an inference about what direction the ice was moving. And we see them here as well. When a glacier melts, it's going to deposit or drop off all of the sediment, all of the pieces of rock and sand and silt and clay that it was carrying with it. And when it does so, it just kind of drops it off. And so we end up with these big piles of this unsorted and unlayered sediment. And we have a term for these sediments, and that's called glacial till. Here you can see big, small, all mixed together. And this is what it looks like in reality. And this serves as further evidence that there was once a glacier in this area. When the glaciers move, they push this till or this unsorted sediment out in front of them, very similar to a bulldozer pushing a pile of soil. When the glaciers then melt, they leave behind these piles of sediment, and these are called moraines. Moraines reveal a lot about a glacier particularly the terminal moraine, shown in this diagram, line XY, this marks the farthest point that a glacier traveled before it receded or melted away. Here's a terminal moraine in reality. This area right here is the till, the unsorted, unlayered sediment that was pushed out in front of the glacier. We can see another uh, terminal moraine right here. Long Island, New York is a great example. It is formed as a result of multiple periods of glaciation, and therefore there are multiple terminal moraines, the Harbor Hill Moraine, the Ronkonkoma Mor Moraine, etc. If we were to look at line EF here from the side as a profile, it would look like this. You would have this first moraine, and then notice this term outwash, which is just some of the material that's been washed out by melting water. And then we have a second period of glaciation that resulted in the Ronkonkoma moraine. 
Glaciers are the only agent of erosion that are really capable of moving large, large boulders. These are called glacial erratics. So when we see randomly scattered boulders throughout the landscape, we can infer that they were moved there by a glacier. And that's because running water or wind are not capable of moving such large sediments. So here's a glacial erratic, and here's what they look like in reality. The only way these sediments could have gotten there is by being transported by a glacier, frozen in a large sheet of ice. Oftentimes, glaciers will leave behind something called a drumlin, which is simply an elongated hill of sediment. Remember, the sediment would be unsorted and unlayered. What's interesting about drumlins is the shape that they often take as the ice goes up and over and moves the sediment. You end up with this teardrop-shaped hill. And by looking at the shape of the hill, you can determine the direction that the ice flowed. It often flowed towards the flatter side of the hill, the less steep side. Here's a field of drumlins in upstate New York, and by looking at the shapes, we can tell that the ice was moving in this direction. Here's an entire community that appears to have been built right on top of a drumlin, surrounded by farming fields. This diagram shows us the stages in the formation of what's called a kettle, or a kettle lake. And this is very common in areas where you've had glaciers. What happens is large pieces of ice break off from the glacier, and then that ice gets buried by some sediment and then eventually melts, leaving behind a hole in the ground known as a kettle. And if it fills with meltwater, it'll be a kettle lake as seen here and here. When the glaciers melt, we get a lot of meltwater, which forms streams coming off the front end of the glacier. Like all running water, these deposit sorted sediments. So remember, the sediments deposited by the glacier itself are unsorted, that's our till, creating our moraines. But when we have outwash, when we have water that's become liquid and melted, creating streams, then we end up with some sorted sediments. And you can see that in this diagram here. This is an outwash plain, so all of these sediments were deposited by runoff from melting glaciers, also seen here. If we look at New York State, many of the features we see were formed by glaciers during the last ice age, which was about 22,000 years ago. Here we see the movement of the various glaciers during that ice age, all generally moving from Canada down south. We can see lots of features in New York State that have formed as a result of glaciation, including these large fields of drumlins near Oswego, right off of Lake Ontario. Additionally, we see the Great Lakes, which were actually just large U-shaped valleys that have become dammed by sediment and then filled with water. Very similar to the Finger Lakes of upstate New York, all the result of glaciers. As climate change continues and the planet warms, including the oceans and the atmosphere, we're starting to see the disappearance of large-scale glaciation. If you look at this comparison of the same spot, 60 years apart, you'll notice that the majority of the ice has disappeared. The same thing can be seen here. And we're seeing this happen all over the entire planet. As the ice melts, it adds fresh water to the oceans, causing sea level to rise, which is further complicating our complex atmospheric weather conditions and how climate works on a whole. It's something that scientists are exploring and trying to figure out a solution for as we speak. That's a quick look at glaciers. Thanks very much.